And so they want to run a game on you with this biological substrate number. A quick reference here to some tentative research that was noted in the New York Times Wednesday, September 16th. And you should read this piece, and the research is tentative, but read the scientific journals. But there's something interesting here. The, the headline reads, Behavior Therapy Can Change How the Brain Functions, Say uh, researchers say. Like drug therapy, behavior modification therapy produces metabolic, what do we mean there? Chemical enzymatic changes in the brain and functional changes. That is how different parts and areas of the brain relate one to the other in controlling a behavior and in initiating a behavior. You know what I'm saying? Like drug therapy, behavior modification. This is a non-drug therapy, right? This is a therapy based on social relationships between the therapist and the client. Okay, and that's what we are comparing here. And what does it say here then? Both of these produces metabolic and functional changes in the brains of people with obsessive compulsive disorder. It is the first time that behavior therapy, remember we're talking about a basic social thing here, even though there's some other adjuncts to it, a method that changes the way people think, and I'm emphasizing think, about uncomfortable thoughts or feelings, the way they deal with uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. This therapy particularly, therapy particularly relating to obsessive compulsive behavior where people are exhibiting certain attitudes toward compelling thoughts and behaviors. So this therapy which seeks to change the way they think about these compulsive feelings and think about these thoughts and these uh, uh, these urgings that keep telling them to do things has been shown to physically alter brain function in a mental disorder. And we could go on to pieces longer. I moved, I brought this up to, to get those who might think that we only talk about rats. What are we saying here then? That the very nature of human relations itself can change the functional nature of the brain. The idea being then that even when they come to you and tell you that there's some kind of correlation between a brain, uh, brain functionality and a particular behavior, don't fall for the okie doke that that necessarily means that the society is not responsible for producing that behavior. Society shapes the brain as it shapes other things as well. I'll move on quickly here. The theme of black on black violence, the book, is that the alleged criminality of black males will be used to justify the repression of the African-American community and quite possibly its genocidal annihilation. In other words, the running theme of the book, Black on Black Violence, is this, that the alleged criminality of African males will be used as a major rationale so that when this society decides that it will annihilate this community, the other members and nations and people in the world will buy it because they have been convinced that we are innately criminal. And what I'm trying to get across in there then is how this propaganda is developed. This is why despite what you say from a logical point of view. Despite the fact you may say this is not the majority of our youth who are in jail, the vast majority of our youth are not engaged in violent behavior. The majority of people on welfare are not black people. The majority of people in prison are not black folk. You know, you can lay one fact after another, and yet what happens? The people still insist in seeing it as a black problem, don't they? When you lay evidence and facts before a people, even evidence and facts that they themselves have collected, and they still insist in seeing you in a particular way, then you must recognize 
that they are seeing you in that way because it is important to their own psychological state of being and because it serves their own interest. Yes. And you must ask the question then, why are they obsessed about projecting this kind of image? And you will see then that it is there to rationalize their behavior against you. They're not, and therefore, as I will say a little later on, this idea of arguing with these people point for point is not what the game is about. It's not what it's about. Let me quickly move on. We must, I want to lay a, a context because often we discuss these issues out of context. And I've told you before, as I've told you in black on black violence, that European sociology, psychology, and so forth decontextualizes issues, meaning that it discusses violence or crime as if they do not exist within a social context, as if they do not have a history, as if they do not serve a function in the society. So you're made to look directly at the behavior and the behavior only and to judge it and treat it without looking at the context in which it occurs and look at how the context itself they create the behavior. And even behavior therapy plays this game, by the way. Okay? You must start at the context first before you discuss these problems. What is the context? The context is this, that we are a dominated people. We are dominated by European people. Am I making myself clear? This is where we start. This is where you start. We are under the control of another people. We are vulnerable to that other people who are holding our lives and the quality of our lives in their hands. That's the fact you must start with. The second fact is, domination is a social problem. Am I clear here? Domination itself is a problem. It is a social problem, particularly for the dominated, isn't it? Even if it's for the dominator, it's still a social problem. Keep this in mind. Domination, therefore, generates the, ve the very existence of domination means that a social problem has been what? Generated. Huh? You can't have domination without having a what? Social problem. So domination generates a social problem, and as long as it exists, it maintains that social problem. As long as you're under the domination of Europeans, you will have social problems. There are some idiots among us who think that they can leave the European in control of African people and get justice and peace. It is not possible. Domination is built on injustice. And you cannot then leave the European in power over black people and then expect to, be, uh, to receive justice. It's illogical. It's not possible. Domination benefits the dominator. We are dominated because it what? Benefits those who dominate us. Therefore, the dominator benefits from the social what? Problems. In other words, the problems of black people benefit white folk. And they are created for their benefit, and they are maintained for their benefit. And therefore, those who dominate us have an investment, monetarily and every other way, in perpetuating the symptoms of maladjustment in us as a people, and they engage in interactions that reinforce those problems. That's why no matter what kind of program they lay out for you, it does not resolve the social problems that they claim they are designed to resolve. The, and, and I'll be through in a, just a second or two here. The problems of the dominated 
provide evidence which justifies their domination and supports their own domination. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the major outcomes of power and one of the major benefits of being powerful is that you can generate the evidence to justify your power and to justify your domination. 